Hey all, welcome to Circle of Tone, and today we have the mighty James Gang, the power trio with Joe Walsh. Let's get straight to it. This one is a, a good one. And thank you, by the way, for the for the comments on the last Pink Floyd video. I asked for suggestions for bands, and one of them suggested James Gang. So thanks for that. If you have any suggestions yourself, let me know in the comments. And also, uh, we have a Circle of Tone Facebook group. This helped as well. I said, does anybody know what you use? And then, boom, one of the Circle of Tone members told me exactly what he used so that's amazing with you know links to him talking about it as well so that's what that group is all about we're over a thousand strong go ahead and join share your music share your opinions all that good stuff so let's get straight to it and uh pretty surprised i was surprised about this uh, about the amp on this so all will be revealed after me having a crack at james gang joe walsh so clatone And we're back. Let's get straight to it, what he used. On that track, he used a 60s Telecaster. I thought, it, for some reason, I always thought he was Les Paul, Les Paul, but that early stuff was Telly. And any strats, obviously, now and then. But uh, the, the, the amp is what surprised me. It's the little amp that could. The Fender Champ. The Tweed, the old, the old that classic old speaker, the old Alan Eco speaker, just cranked to 10 and just let rip and that's what it was that amazing amazing riff and the way they captured it and his expressive playing is so great and so that's it just two things one tally you know one fender champ and one fly guy i actually tried to buy a fender champ for this video you know locally well trade for something else you know it didn't come through but i saw him play the same song live and he was using an ac30 so that's what I used. I used an AC30 with the Alnico speaker and, you know, crankity, crankity, crank. And that's what I got. With this as well, I used a, this is a $100 guitar, which has priceless 60s Fender pickups in it. And also the uh, electronics, even the knobs are, are old school. And, you know, all the internals is from the 60s. Uh, I have USA tuners on it. So you might recognize this from the last video I did. I did a video on Pink Floyd, Sid Barrett era. So this is the same one. So it's nice to get this out twice, getting my money's worth out of, uh, out of this, <laughs> even though it was a bargain. Let's just have a, have a word about the power trio and how it came together. It was a Jimmy and Dale and Joe. And it's funny how it came together. So Joe Walsh had actually just joined this band and there was about five or six members in it. 
Um, and they had been established for about a year before Joe joined. And so they already had those, you know, wonderful old schisms that all musicians know about. And they were on their way to one of the first gigs with Joe in it. And they broke up on the way to Detroit, on to a Detroit gig. And they didn't even have enough money to get back. So what happened was they kind of brainstormed between the three of them, who, who the three of them who ended up going to be, you know, uh, James Gang. And they, Joe was like, I can kind of sing. Uh, I wasn't a singer. He wasn't a singer in the band. But, and I don't really know many lyrics. I know half of a Steppenwolf song and uh, half of a few other songs, you know, lyrically. So what we can do is we can sing the first verse, then go into a, a jam session. And then to finish it, I'll just sing the second verse. And we'll do that. We'll try and drag that out for 40 minutes. So that's what they did. And they, so they go on stage and they do like these half kind of sort of songs with a jam in the, in the middle. And the crowd went nuts. They gave them like stand innovation. And uh, they, they were opening for a band called Cream. Have you heard of Cream? How odd is that? How odd a story is that? Your band breaks up, so you kind of fudge something together to get gas money, and then you just happen to be opening for Cream, and you happen to create one of the best power trio rock and roll American bands that's ever put out, ever, you know, picked up a plectrum. Fantastic. And what a chemistry between those three guys. They, they, it's funny enough... I believe the bass player went on to be like a radio. He 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 did live audio for radio. So if there's a band playing, I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that he was involved in being a producer for that. And the, the drummer went on to become a world record holder for the most license plates. He's a license plates collector of uh, American, old American cars. So interesting stuff, you know. It's uh, But then you never know who you're going to end up with that is going to create that vibe. And in my opinion, Joe has never got back to that old, dirty stuff. I, I wish he would. You know, he, uh, for those of, the, of you that don't know, he was in a little band called the Eagles as well. So, you know, Hotel California. He was part of that, one of the top 10 guitar solos of all time. But that is for another day because we'll get into that band maybe in the future if I get enough uh, requests for it. And one thing I noticed as well, you know, because uh, I, I do my research and, I, you know, I, I've seen it in the past as well, where I watch him play. He puts his entire body into it. You know, they, they call people facists. He was a facist and a bodyist and everything would be just, he would ring every note. He, would, he, he wouldn't stand there and try and look cool. That's what I loved about him, watching him, watching him play is he was such an expressive player, you know, literally and figuratively. And it was per, it was it was just watching him play, even when he was messed up, you know, because he, he went through his issues like most did back then with drugs and alcohol. But God, it's good to see him come through because he's in his 70s now and he's still eloquent. And, you know, it's I love I love I just love his interviews. And there's an old classic video of him on Starlix, which is one of my favorite uh, things he he's just sitting there telling people how to set up a guitar the guitar is a 1958 les paul he's famous for les paul so that's, that's what i thought this was even though listening to it closely it's like it's obviously you know single coil so what i loved it what he you know you know you have these stories of the one that got away joe walsh gave jimmy page a guitar it was a 1959 les paul which went on to be The One. And I think it's actually called The One. So the most famous guitar in rock history. It's not the Red Special. It is the num it is the one. It is that 1959 Jimmy Page Les Paul. And that was given to him by Joe Walsh. Now Joe Walsh is an absolute he, he so knows what he's talking about. But he, he not not from a specky nerd type of aspect, you know. He's one of those experienced guys where He'll tell he'll tell people straight up, do not change your even your 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 guitar pots. Use just just flush them out. Just retain the original, you know, because he knows about new parts. He knows about the value of the old electronics. You know what I mean? And he was he was talking about that in the nineties, and nobody was talking about that type of thing in the nineties. You know, I don't remember any um, guitar magazines being obsessed about retaining 
the older guitars, you know, because they were everything was about pointy guitars back then. And everybody was selling their, uh, you know, nineteen sixties Gibsons to get the the new shredder. You know what I mean? <laughs> it just pains me to say it, but it's true. And there's a lot of music flowing in that man's veins. His mother, his mother was a uh, a classically trained well, musicologist. So he started off just to please his parents. To you know, I believe he played an oboe for a while. But then he realized they were well, like most teenage boys, a nobo is not going to get me the chicks. And he moved on to guitars. Because funny enough, when he was like five years old, he can remember uh, listening to the radio a lot. It wasn't even FM radio, it was AM radio back then. And his the, the first thing that kind of tw- re- put a light bulb on in his head was from the amazing Les Paul. And Les Paul back then was one of the biggest names in music, believe it or not, as a, as a performer. And him and his wife would perform, they had a hit called The Moon, what was it called? Before the show, Keith had swallowed a gorilla tranquilizer. And they had a, they, and funnily enough, at the time, Les Paul kind of invented multi-track recording. So there's so many little pieces of history in that not many people talked about until recently when it came to Les Paul. A lot of people didn't even know Les Paul was a good guitarist. And Les Paul was the shrapnel label of his time. He was an a absolute speed freak, you know? He was doing the jazz. Oh my God, that guy, that guy could play. And he still could play to the day he died. And, uh, you know, that's why it's kind of sad to see what happened to the company. But hopefully it shakes out soon. I don't know keep beating on Gibson because Gibson are my, my my one of my biggest loves and I can't afford the 50s and the early 60s Gibsons which which I really like so what I try and do is recreate the insides of them at least and he's just such he's just a good bloke just read just seeing his because uh, I watch a lot of his interviews and usually I do it for research in the end I was doing it for pleasure just listening to him talk you know he, he was uh he does a lot for charity and I'm going to leave a link in the description for something called vet age so for vet vet aid and something for it's a it's a, a concert that he puts together for veterans and you know his father he didn't never met his father his father was tragically killed in active duty he was a pilot I believe he was a, actually an instructor he was that good and you know tragically he passed away and and he noticed, you know, back then they didn't have much support for veterans that were killed, you know. And he, he said that in Vietnam, a lot of his friends went there and they never come back. And for somebody to be impacted that much and to still, you know, to go through the rock and roll fame and to still care about that aspect is just, I think, is a testament to the man. So go and check out that. You can donate. Uh, I'm going to donate myself. You can donate to the veterans through through my link. And uh, also, you know, maybe buy a ticket because there's lots of amazing people on that show. Kind of like Live Aid, but for veterans. So it's perfect. So that's it. I hope you like this. I didn't get any information on the the recording process, but I'll take some pictures of what I did. And, uh, you know, this this is what, this is my setup. These are the microphones that I used. Very simple this time, you know, two mics, you know, and uh, blended the two mics. And also the microphones that I used are going to be part of a series that I'm going to be coming up with soon called $20 microphones. And the average cost between $20 and $40 of the mics that I tend to use these days. And they keep on coming up. I keep on using them. And they're amazing value. We're not talking junk. We're talking made in America. We're talking made in Japan. Uh, But these go under the radar because the mighty SM57 is, you know, I have some I have some opinions about this, the 57 as well. Let me just go on a tangent. SM7 for vocals, SM57 for uh, for guitars, right? It's kind of like the thing now, especially in the metal and the rock aspect. What people don't realize is an SM7 is a very harsh sounding microphone. An SM57 is a very harsh sounding microphone. The classic albums that were recorded in the 70s and 80s that sound so good were recorded to tape through consoles through compressors, through uh, all sorts of preamps to get rid of that. And now everybody is going to digital, which is pristine, and every single aspect is covered. But just because, you know, it was a staple back then, should it be a staple now? 
It's a great microphone. I use it all the time. But in digital, do we really need all that mid insanity? Especially on vocals. The SM7, in my opinion, sounds like garbage on modern vocals. It's just harsh. Just go and listen to that versus other microphones in uh, sound tests. And you'll be like, huh, maybe uh, we should look into this. <laughs> what works for tape might not work for digital. Sorry about that rant. Funnily enough, when he had just started getting a little bit of success with the, the James gang, Pete Townsend took him under his wing. And uh, we all know about Joe Walsh's success when it comes to alcohol and drugs and the rest of it. You know, he's kind of a legendary figure in that respect. But Keith Moon took a shine to him. And those two became thick as thieves. Joe Walsh and Keith Moon, you can only imagine. <laughs> and also uh, John Belushi as well. So <laughs> imagine that. All right, chaps, this was a fun one. And uh, like I say, all the information is in the description. Uh, come join us at Circular Tone Facebook group. Uh, like I say, we're over a thousand strong. Lots of good suggestions there. Uh, lots of discussions on different bands. We just discussed uh, Cryptosity. It's not all about the classic rock. We are, there's a lot of metal guys there as well, including some of the extreme stuff, because we're all over the map on Circular Tone. We tend to cover it all, apart from Gent and Progressive, because fuck Gent. No, 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 no. Bring back 80 speed metal. No, 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 no. My channel was dead recently, but uh, starting to slowly pick up again. So hopefully uh, things will go. So if you are a, sh a fan of the Eagles or Joe Walsh in general and James Gang, you know, people obsessed with them, please share this video. It really, that really helps me. If you just a Facebook link, uh, you know, just say, hey, go and check out these, you know, if you're into guitars and stuff, spread the word. All right, chaps. Longest intro, outro ever. Oh God, I can't speak. It's been a long day. So to the tone. First take, first take, first take. That's going good. I'm saving that. That was a good intro. Oh, that's <laughs> Fucking thunder and lightning. <sighs> Alright, this time, this time, this time. No excuses. Oh. First take, first take, first take, first take.